Today, it looks like Intel is giving big performance to gamers. Next-gen GPUs may finally meet demand, huge RTX 4080 and 4090 leak, and Ryzen 7000 specs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, during this year's GDC conference, Intel shared a ton of new information on their upcoming XESS technology. Remember that XESS is Intel's super sampling similar to NVIDIA's DLSS or AMD's FSR. Ultimately, it's closer to NVIDIA's DLSS because it takes advantage of machine learning. With that said, they confirmed again that it will work across other GPUs, as long as they support SM6.4 and DP4A. When it comes to performance, Intel's XESS looks to have five different modes. Ultra Performance, Performance, Balance, Quality, and Ultra Quality. In a demo by RENS, Intel's XESS got as high as 2.53 times the performance in Ultra Performance at 4K and 1.27 times in Ultra Quality. Intel's also working to fix the usual issues with temporal upscaling like ghosting or blurring, as you can see here. Overall, Intel's XESS is looking like a serious contender to both AMD and Nvidia. Time will tell if one ends up winning over the other, or if there's enough room in the space for all three. But first, join the free-to-play sensation that's been played by over 100 million gamers with today's sponsor, Hero Wars, the fantasy RPG with over 130 missions to explore, fight bosses, discover items, and level up your heroes. And speaking of, there's over 50 unique heroes to find, each with their own unique abilities. Besides Rufus, who crushes everyone with his shield, who's your favorite hero? But that's just the beginning, as Hero Wars includes six other modes, like Arena, where you can challenge other players and PvP combat, the tower to earn gold, or you can join a guild and head to the Celestial City. No matter what you do, you'll have fun with Hero Wars. Plus, they've got weekly events, so there's always something to do. And to make things even better, when you scan this QR code or use the link in the description, you'll get a secret hero, as well as 600 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Next up for today, we have yet another reason to get excited for AMD and Nvidia's next-gen GPUs. If you've been following the channel, you know that GPU prices have been going down, and while not at MSRP across the board, things are certainly getting better. Well, in a new report from DigiTimes and later by Tom's Hardware, TSMC looks to be ramping up their 4 and 5 nanometer production. In fact, they're set to up both 4 nanometer and 5 nanometer production by 25%. We recently found out that NVIDIA's Hopper is based on their 4 nanometer process, so that makes sense. What's really important though is that AMD's next gen GPUs and CPUs are based on TSMC's 5 nanometer process. And of course, you may be thinking that 25% isn't that much for new CPUs and GPUs, but keep in mind that both Qualcomm and Apple have products based on their 5 nanometer node. We're talking even Apple's iPhone 13 chips are built on it, so 25% is a massive production boost. And with NVIDIA's Ada Lovelace rumored to use TSMC's 5 nanometer node, there's a chance that both companies will be able to meet demand with their next-gen GPUs, meaning prices will hopefully go down even lower. Then again, if prices for their next-gen parts are as bad as it sounds like, MSRP may not be good enough. Next up, we have a massive leak from none other than Igor's lab. For those who don't know, Igor's lab is one of the most trustworthy leakers out there, and today he received a massive leak on NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs. For starters, he received an image of the Ada Lovelace PCB from one of his sources, and then confirmed it with two others. Ada Lovelace is of course the codename for NVIDIA's RTX 4000 GPUs. From that, he learned that next-gen GPUs can get up to 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. Now they could opt for 1 gigabyte modules, which would mean 12 gigabytes of memory, but for obvious reasons, that's extremely unlikely. Basically, it looks like Nvidia isn't planning to raise the memory in next-gen cards. Not only that, but he also learned that the 8102 looks to be ping compatible with Nvidia's GA102, which means board partners are able to work on their cards before actually getting Ada Lovelace. And with that, Igor's lab looks to confirm that 8102, which is the high-end Ada Lovelace GPU, think 4090 and 4080, has a TBP of an unreal 600 watts. Using this, board partners are able to test for Ada Lovelace by pumping the 3090 Ti to 600 watts with a custom 
BIOS. This lets them test dissipating all that heat. And speaking of power draw, it looks like board partners will be required to include a 4 8 pin to 1 PCI Express 5.0 pin connector, meaning you'll need 4 8 pin connectors to power this bad boy. And who knows how many you'll need to really overclock it. Some may even have 2 PCI Express 5.0 connectors. Who knows? Like I said before, unless you have a massive PSU for a higher end 4000 card, you'll likely need a new one. At the end of the day, NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs are looking impressively powerful, but also incredibly power-hungry. And lastly for today, we have leaked specs on AMD's next-gen Ryzen 7000 CPUs. In a new tweet from known leaker Graymon55, he goes over Raphael's R9 CPUs. For those who don't know, Raphael is the codename for AMD's Ryzen 7000 desktop CPUs. Here he goes over the TDP, but later gets more specific. According to him, the highest end model gets up to the same 16 cores as last gen, and that obviously sort of sucks for those hoping for more, especially given Intel's already confirmed that their 13th gen will be getting 24 total cores. With that said, the 7950 XT comes with a TDP of 170 watts. And of course, that's quite a bit higher than the 105 watt TDP of the 5950X, especially given it's on TSMC's 5 nanometer process and comes with the same amount of cores. But this isn't too surprising, as he later explains. It's rumored to come with ABX 512 support. It also gets 5 plus gigahertz clocks, and don't forget that rumors are pointing to it actually including an integrated GPU. So that makes way more sense of the TDP. Next, he claims that the 12 core part has a TDP of 105 watts, which is the same as last gen. But of course, given CPU power draw looks to be going up along with GPUs, the US might be forced to move up to 220 or 240 volt outlets before long. That, or you may have to plug your PC into the dryer outlet. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD and NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs? And what about Ryzen 7000? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!